good morning. How's everything going today? Good with us, but there's no yard sales out there. So I thought I'd sit and chat with y'all a little bit. And a Bible verse today, I looked it up on my phone that said, and I love it. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he smile on you and be gracious to you. May he look your way and give you peace. That's right. Peace is wonderful. Numbers 6, 24, 26. May God give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. Psalms 20, verse 4. On the NIV Bible. What a good blessing. So this morning, I'm going to tell you about my some of my childhood memories of what we did and how we tried to make money and how we made popsicles. We was at a yard sale this morning and there was these little popsicle things that you could put your uh, Kool-Aid or whatever in it and freeze it and then it really looked like a popsicle. Well, when I was 12 years old, out on the farm, we got a refrigerator and talk about fun. We made popsicles. We had Kool-Aid and we had ice trays where you could make ice cubes, big ice cubes. So what we would do is we had this plum thicket and it was pretty big. Daddy put the outdoor toilet out there in the plum thicket and I used to go out there and sit down and read my book or look at the Sears and Roebuck catalog because you know what the Sears and Roebuck catalog was? It was our toilet paper. It was slick. But if you wanted a pretty good, <laughs> it worked. <laughs> oh, I remember those days. So I'm going to share them with you. So we would go, and that plum thicket had the best plums on it. They were delicious. And, and they were big, and it was planted there before we moved there. So it was old enough that it had a lot of plums. And I'm gonna insert this right quick. One year we decided we was gonna make us some money, us kids. So we got some buckets and lard cans and stuff, and we picked up a lot of plums, and we persuaded our daddy to take us to town, which was three miles down Fredericksburg. And we was gonna go door to door and sell those plums and people could make jelly out of them or eat them. Well, sad to say, we didn't sell any. We tried, but we brought them home. So that's life. So to back to making popsicles. So we would go out to the plum thicket and you can't use dead wood. So we would put the Kool-Aid in the ice cream trays, in the ice trays, and we would get a stick from the plum thicket you cut a branch off the tree and cut it in pieces so long and let it stick out of the ice tray. And when that froze, we had homemade popsicles. We enjoyed that so much in the summertime. And we would make a whole bunch because we had a whole bunch of kids. And I was the oldest. And I was 12. And Norman and Phyllis liked those popsicles. We'd get them out when we wanted them. We didn't eat them all up in one time. You get out what you want and then put the rest back in. So another time we decided we was going to make money. We told, we, so we told Daddy, we said, let's, we had a lot of little Christmas trees over in one of our pastures. And so I asked Daddy to uh, cut us some little Christmas trees. And we would take them to town and we would sell those Christmas trees. Well, he cut middle-sized ones, little ones, and some bigger ones. And we went to Fredericksburg again, three miles there, three miles back, gravel road. So we got to town, and they had quite a few houses in Fredericksburg. So we went door to door. Daddy was driving the truck, and we knocked on the door. Would you like a Christmas tree? You can pick you out one. Only so much, I don't remember what we charged. I got my coffee from McDonald's. James got that for me this morning in there was one yard sale only. And she had all these rubber bands. <laughs> and so James bought it. How many was there, James? I think it was a thousand. A thousand rubber bands. And my cat, Big Tom, likes rubber bands. So he throwed some out on the table that we can let Big Tom have to play with. And Bella's over there in James's lap. Can you see that? 
So she's not with me this morning. Look at that. She's loving up on her daddy. Honey, turn that light on for you and let people see that. Now you can see that better. See that? She loves him too, though. Now then, where was I? Back to trying to make money when we was kids. So we took all those Christmas trees to town and with high hopes. I've always had high hopes, and I still do. <laughs> I am always looking forward. I, I try not to be negative. I do not like negative, and I don't like to be around negative people. I like to be people that are like my mom said, look on the bright side. So I'm looking on the bright side. So we're trying to sell Christmas trees and we don't give up real fast. But you know what happened? We did not sell one Christmas tree. There, daddy was out gas again. So what are you going to do with all truckload of Christmas trees? Well, we had a big sinkhole down in front of our house that when we wanted to get rid of garbage and stuff, you just took it down to the sinkhole and threw it in. Because you know what? Everything disappeared down that sinkhole. You don't get too close to it. You just throw stuff in the sinkhole. We threw all those Christmas trees in the sinkhole. They were gone. So anyhow, that sinkhole, sometimes when it rained, it would get a little water in it, but it went down real fast. And Daddy said what he thought it was that there was a cave under there with a creek under it. And that's what took all the garbage away. I don't know where it went, probably to Blue River. They say that Southern Indiana where we live and around near, there are a lot of caverns and caves underneath. In fact, there's two big caves about 20, 25, 30 miles down past Corridon, Indiana that is uh, very famous and people travel from all over to go through it. One time James taught me when we, he talked me into going to one of them a few years ago. And I, so I said, oh, he says, I want to show you that cave. I think we was courting. I probably was 70 something because I married him when I was 76. Number three, a wonderful man. I love him. So anyway, so we, which, what cave was that we went to, James? Do you remember? Warbone, I think. Huh? Squire Boone Caverns. Squire Boone Caverns. Boom, I had forgot the name of it, but he's sitting here and he's helping me today. Ain't that sweet of him? But so we went down to Square Broom Caverns. And guess what? It had, a, I don't know how many steps, a lot of steps down to get into it. And it was beautiful. It was gorgeous. I think some pictures of Square Broom Caverns is on the internet. You could look Squire at it. Boone. Huh? Square Boom Caverns. Supposedly named after Abe Lincoln's brother, I think. Uh, no, Daniel, said, Boone, Daniel, Daniel Boone. Boone's brother it was named after. I think so. Squire Boone Caverns. And they they are, a, it's fun to go to. It's, if you're ever in this area, don't miss it. Thank you, Lord, for my coffee this morning. We're going out to breakfast this morning, and I know y'all can't wait to hear all that stuff. Ha! Huh. Anyway, the, what, it's like the VFW, but it's the, what is it, James? American Legion. Huh? American Legion. I get those mixed up. Y'all have to excuse me. But I get my new hearing aids next week, and I can hear everybody better. That's going to be wonderful. I appreciate my granddaughter. She works for, I was uh, texting with her, and she works in New Jersey for this famous hearing aid company, which I don't remember the name of. Hearing Life is Hearing Life. And she works for cor corporate. And they've got like 600 or 700 of uh, offices all over the U.S., USA. So there was one here in New Albany, and that girl was so good. She did a great job testing my ears. I had not had them tested since I was about 35, and then I knew I couldn't hear good out of one ear, but the other ear has proved pretty faithful, and I can hear pretty good. So I thank the Lord for his blessings today, and we're going to we are planning on going to look for a kitty cat again today. We didn't get to go yesterday. Too much happening. Too much stuff going on. We stay busy. We may be senior citizens, but we don't slow down yet. Well, maybe a little. We take good naps. <laughs> James took a long nap yesterday. I usually take about 30 minutes. But we planned on going to look at... 
but they don't open today till 11. And so we'll do some other things till they open. And up at Jeffersonville, they got a lot of, they've got about 50 cats. And I, I kind of thinking I would like to have a Tom cat that's a little older, maybe like Big Tom, because he's the sweetest, nicest cat that I've ever owned besides Bella and a few others. I'm a cat person and James is too. When I married him, he had six cats. Can you believe that? Six cats. Well, over the years, they're gone. So we got those two at the pound, at the animal shelter, whatever you want to call it. We used to call it the pound. You, here comes Miss Bella. She, she can't resist being on video. A lot of y'all don't watch it all the way through, so you're not going to see her unless you keep on moving and listen to me a while longer. But I have a lot of good people that do watch me. Uh, and I love y'all. And God bless you. And this is Saturday. And I'm going to say, Sarah Nera, is that goodbye? I don't know for sure. Came right out of my brain. And I got my coffee. And I'm going to find me some glasses so I won't look cross-eyed. And I have them right here. I'm going to take a sip of coffee first. Hang on, Norman. Hang on, Benita. That's my brother and his wife. They watch this. Hang on, Brother Denny and his wife, Patricia. I'm going to get them glasses. Look what I pick out this morning. James bought a whole box full the other day for $2. <laughs> and I love them. And I like to put one on of the morning. Now, there I go. So, y'all walk that path now where Jesus would be pleased with you. Bye-bye.